Hey everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky. I am joined here by the wonderful Christine Lee. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We were talking about earlier um, during my stream with Josh, talking about dinner last night. Oh. And oh, I'm still recovering from that. I know. That was I such a good dinner. didn't eat breakfast this morning because I, I was know. so full. Well, it's been an amazing day of UI and UX. Hopefully, some of you have been tuning in all day. I always love seeing who have been joining us from the beginning all the way to afternoon. We kicked off the day with Josh Iwata, and then Hiba was here just a few moments ago, and now we're with Christine, who's going to continue on with her amazing scuba diving app. And a big hello to everyone who's joining us on Behance. Right now, we have Eric and Anzi and the Paco, Paco, the Paco? <laughs> it's the Paco now. Yeah. We got Gus Vod over there, Destiny, Afrosia, and I saw Val in there somewhere. What's up, Val? Our awesome Star Wars geek in the, <laughs> in the house. Um, so we're going to be continuing with Christine's scuba diving app. But before we do that, in about 15 minutes, we've got chat and win. So there'll be some fireworks. You have a chance to win uh, 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Who doesn't love stickers? That's such an I amazing I still don't have idea. anything on my computer. I'm going to get there. I promise. And Baby Shark is going <laughs> on. Yes. And um, about half an hour before the stream ends, we also have a, a challenge going on. And if you, the challenge if, on Behance, if you click on the little tab at the top right, you can see the challenge. And if I remember correctly, there it is. Thank you. Uh, create a mobile app experience to browse. Nope, wrong one. Create a goal tracking experience. That's today's challenge. And if you get it in before, about half an hour before the stream ends, Christine and I will definitely review it. So for those who are just joining today and what weren't here yesterday, Tell them a little bit about yourself and what you're going to be doing. Yeah, so um, I see a lot of familiar names actually in the chat, all yeah. the live loyals. <laughs> um, but for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm Christine. I am currently working as a product designer at Evernote, but I've also nice. worked as a freelancer while traveling remotely, and I've also worked at a small startup in Boston. So kind of a weird range of experiences, but mostly in the product design realm. And what we've been working on is a scuba diving app. So it's allowing people who dive to learn more about dive sites around the world and more specifically to learn about the creatures that they're going to see on mm. their dives. So lots of fun animals um, that I know. we saw yesterday. I, I didn't get time <laughs> after yesterday's dinner. I just like passed out. But I want to go back and really look at some of these crazy fish that you yeah. pointed out. Some of them, the nudibranch, I think. Yeah, the nudibranchs. <laughs> some of them look cute? like literal dinosaurs. So it's cute. really like cool. I want one. Aliens. I know. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. And Kevin Lee is in the house. Hi, He's Kevin. excited for uh, Baby Shark. <laughs> and Val's saying we should start a Baby Shark choir. Let's do it. Yeah. Can we get some audio from the chat? Ooh. Or is it all text? No, only? it's all, all, all text. text. Yeah. Too bad. Um, all right. Well, anyways, we just wanted to give you like a quick recap of what we're going to be doing today. So this actually changed from yesterday because we got through a lot more than I expected we did. yesterday. Well, um, you did. So yesterday, what we did is we just understood the problem and we went through and I'll show, I'll walk through like some of that work that we went over um, to catch everyone up. But today, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be filling in some missing functionality. Okay. Because as I went back and cleaned up my layers, I was like, oh, actually, we missed like two key things that right. I was supposed to include in the wireframe. And that so. will always happen when you're designing. You it think does. You're, you're sitting there, you're zoned in, you think you have everything down pat, then you go to test it or you take a break and you come back and you realize, oh. I can't get back, or I can't get to this screen. And you know, there's a lot of things that are missing. Right. Yeah. And it's so easy because, like, I mean, especially when you're working with images, it's so fun to like get sucked into the visual design, and you're like, yeah. let me add more. But um, there are two key things that I want to make sure to include as a part of today. Um, and then we'll also continue refining the visual styles and applying them to the UI. And I took a little bit of a head start last night, so I'll show you what I got up to, and then we'll kind of wrap that up today. Nice. Um, the most important thing that I'd love all of your feedback on is we need a name for this app. So I know there are a lot of suggestions floating around yesterday, but we'll make it official and we'll commit to a name today. Yeah. And then um, lastly, we'll start to look at the transition states and gestures. So as we're working through the high fidelity, we can start to incorporate some of those like swiping to go back, swiping to go up, and all of those fun native um, patterns. Nice. So, um, I think me... Val is going to buy us uh, shark outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. I'll I'm it. counting on you, Val. <laughs> all 
All right, so let me go here. All right, so yesterday, for those of you just tuning in, we started off with like just simple sketches on pen and paper um, that I had in my notebook, and then we ended up translating those into the digital screen. So we created these wireframes yesterday, which are pretty simple and straightforward, just to like map out the key screens and then make sure that everything connects properly. Um, and then from there, let me close this overview tab. We don't need it anymore. And then from there, we started to flesh out some of the content. So taking those wireframes and then just adding like real images, um, real dive sites and country names, just to see what the content will look like and get an idea for the layout. Is it working? Are there some things that we need to adjust? And then what I did last night um, in this file is I cleaned up my layers. So now all nice. my layer names are somewhat Okay, um, there are still a couple that I need to clean up that we can get to today. Um, and then I also started taking a look at like the visual styling and what we could do to polish that up. So actually, if I take, just to show you like some progress, let's put them all on the same screen so we can see that progression. So these guys, this is a home screen. It's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there's that. And then we also went through this visual style yesterday. Copy that over. So, oof. Yeah. No. <laughs> They're hidden behind. Why? Let's do this. So if you'll see, um, it's pretty, like once you have the base skeleton, it's really easy to just like yeah. go in and flesh out the content. And it makes such a huge difference too. So. And I really like what you did when you, you, cause yesterday we were having a problem, well you were having a problem, <laughs> where the text wasn't really readable yeah. over top of the images. Mm -hmm. So you put a, very quickly you put it like a black background uh, in the back, behind the text. Yeah. But I like what you did in the new version where it's kind of, you put the text underneath it. It looks really elegant down there. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that this is gonna be super crisp and easy to read. Yeah. So um, didn't go bother with the overlay and I just made it, <clears throat> excuse me, a solid background. Yeah. And so just to call out some of the few visual changes that I made. So yesterday we also started taking a look at the fonts. So if you remember, we were on Adobe Fonts and mm -hmm. played around with like some sample content and ultimately landed on Mr. Eves. So that's what you see here. It's um, actually, this is using Mr. Eves too because I created it as a symbol, but down here we were using Helvetica as a base. So even just changing the font already gives it like a different feel. It does. And then um, this carousel, I actually updated the styling a little bit. So I took it out of the repeat grid that we had, mm -hmm. which made it super easy to just generate content. But now that we're gonna be prototyping it today, I wanted to set it up to move the way that I want it to, so. Yeah, because at the moment, if you do have a repeat grid and you want, let's say, an image on the next artboard to get larger, right. it doesn't really work like that at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking of like, if any of you have played DDR before, and oh. you know how like when you're swiping through all the albums and then like it pops out and then fades back, pops out yep. and fades back. That's kind of the interaction that I wanted to recreate. So here, like all of the dive sites that are focused are larger. And then the ones that are coming up next or the ones that are um, have already been seen, they're a little bit smaller and scaled back and at 50% opacity. So just calling out some of the visual changes there. And then, as we were going through, this is a carousel, so we want to show a progress indicator and let you know which slide you're on. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, the other thing that happened is, so we had a black status bar, and then when you put it on the dark background, it didn't show up, so I just made this white. Um, it's something that people might overlook, but it's um, a little, little tweak that helps. And then, what else did I do? Um, Oh, I also added a placeholder for our logo. So, oh, right, yeah. You know, we need to decide Once that today. Once we have today. a name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we can decide if we want to keep the logo on this page or if we want to get rid of it altogether. Because it seems like a lot of apps nowadays are foregoing the logo on a lot I've of I've noticed pages. that, yeah. Yeah. Some of them just, it's always up there. 
I don't yeah. know why, but mm -hmm. it's up there. As if you don't know what oh. app you're using, right? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I've noticed a lot of apps are just either going with a tiny little logo and yeah. not just their name or just nothing at all. Yeah. Um, I think like a lot of people just want to focus on the content, like Gmail so. and um, what is it, Lyft. Yeah. Like you just need to do your thing and like check your email or get a ride. You don't need to know where you are because you already know where you right. are. So um, that's something that we can consider t today as a group too. So let's see. Um, and then just made sure to like flesh these guys out and polish them up a little bit. And as you can see here, I started to like polish up the animal pages, but there are still a couple left. So I just wanted to walk through that process with you guys today too. Cool. Yeah. This is coming along really nicely. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah. turning out okay. Um, the other thing that I noticed as a part of doing this is, so when I was like looking at the other mockups, like here, um, you can see that the color scheme is kind of all over the place in terms of the content that's provided. Yeah. So it's a little bit jarring and it doesn't feel like it belongs to the same family. It feels like a hacked project, which I guess it kind of is, but there's a way to make it a little bit more cohesive. And so one thing that I was very intentional about was making sure that all of these photos kind of feel like they're part of the same family, that they look like they might have been taken by the same photographer, yep. that they have like a very vibrant style. So And do you use Adobe Stock for those? Yeah, these yeah. are all stock photos. Yeah, they look um, great. Yeah, aren't and there's like some. Uh, uh -huh. I found some like photographers that I really enjoyed, so I just looked through their libraries and was like, this, 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 and this, and so made it really Love easy. It. Um, so, yeah, so I got rid of like here we were using some like above the land shots to show the dive side, but because this is an app to tell you about the creatures underneath. I thought it made sense to actually show you the creatures underneath. So, and that brings a lot more color to the app and mm -hmm. it allows you to, I feel like the content does most of the visual work for you. So that's something that I like to rely on because I'm not as strong of a visual designer. I'll just look for really colorful photos and then let that be like, you know, the aesthetic that people have totally. um, and gravitate towards. So, and this will also allow us to choose fun colors for things like the CTA or, um, any icons that we might want to um, use. So it'll give us a lot of flexibility moving forward. Nice. And I see that you, you did go with the uh, the pink or purple button on the right over there. I did. Yeah. Um, only because this little nudibranch, this sea slug, this is the sea rabbit too. Do you see so the little cute. Like, I do. Ears? It's so cute. Uh, so this one had a pink, so I just pulled it from this image, but we can see how it works on other pages and see if it fits. Totally. Yeah. So what I want to do today, let's see, let me get rid of these because we don't need these anymore. So I thought what would be fun is if we just start hooking up all the screens together to see how this updated visual looks like. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, the, the prototyping mode's probably my favorite. Yeah. That's when things start moving, things start getting exciting. You can get auto animate involved, drag effects, it's gonna be fun. Exactly. Yeah. And yesterday we did some of that prototyping, but we didn't really polish it. It yep. was a little bit janky just to make sure that you got from point A to point B. Right. But today I want to like focus on like the duration and making sure yeah. all of the eases are correct. Yeah, when you're in the early wireframing phase, it probably doesn't matter too much if the yeah. animations are working properly. You just want to see the flow from start to finish. Right. So, um, let's see. So let's start with this carousel. Um, I Looks just like want to like... lost your screen. Oh, Adobe XD. Uh-oh, wrong screen. <laughs> I guess I'm designing now. History? There we go. Uh, version log. Yeah, that was uh, on the Adobe XD website. Nice. Yeah. Um, so on this carousel, we just want to swipe and then see the next one kind of fade in and fade out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these guys, move it over, and then on drag, mm -hmm. auto animate it. Yep. And I feel like Adobe just does all of the work for me. I don't I know, even think about anything. Yeah. For those who are unfamiliar with how auto animate works, it XD basically looks at the differences between the two artboards and figures out what changed and it just magically animates based on your easing options or whatever it might end duration. And as long as the layer names and group names and layer types are the same, it just it's just magic. That's all it is. The engineers just write, do magic and it works. <laughs> That's how it usually works. Yep. All right, so I got these guys hooked up. Um, 
I'll just show it on my screen for now, but we can play around with it on the phone later. But basically, all, that took like, what, five seconds? And now if I drag, Ooh. it'll like fade in and fade out. Fancy. Um, it's doing something a little bit weird here where it's staying fixed. But for the most part, I think it's working okay. Yeah, it's possible that the layer names were identical on those two artboards. Uh, so that could be causing that problem. But yeah, again, for the most part, not that. Yeah. Then if you want to get really fancy, like we were talking about yesterday, you can start animating the masks as well. Yeah. So that's actually something we can do. Yeah. Um, so that that took care of the carousel. Um, let's say that you want to click on this and allow dive site to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. So I have that dive site detail page here. Um, if I click on this, let's just say tap for now on auto animate. Let's see what happens. So it's doing something interesting. Um, I think after looking at this, maybe I want it to tap and then scale up. Mm. So like this yeah. image will like take over the top part. Yep. Let's try that. Kirill is asking, why do you start prototyping for an iPhone 10 resolution? Um, mostly because I have an iPhone 10 and I wanted to play around with it on my phone, but um, it's, I think it's good to keep in mind if you are designing for mobile to be aware of the different screen sizes. Yep. So not everyone is going to have like the latest phone. Um, this actually I just got a couple months ago mm. after having the six for three, four years. So um, just keep that in mind. Like the 10 is actually a lot of fun to design for. I didn't it realize is. because you have so much more space. Yep. Um, and there's like fun little, I mean, I kept talking about the notch yesterday, <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about it again. Like all of, the, all of these fun gestures are included as a part of 10, but yeah. um, I think it's also like, you do want to account for like the sixes and success. And totally. All, all of that, yeah. six, seven, eight. And if you are designing for fun, most of my projects that I do for Dribble or, or Behance are all done for the iPhone 10, only because when you actually put them inside of a mock-up of an iPhone, uh, it just looks so much better because it's mostly bezel-less and you know the iPhones below that they have the big uh, neck at, or the forehead at the top and the, the chin at the bottom. So there's it's more screen on the iPhone 10s if you're just doing it for fun purposes. Right. And as I mentioned yesterday, so I like to seek out new projects um, to learn new skills and because you know, I don't really design for the mobile screen on in my day to day work. Right. I like to use this as an opportunity to yeah, as an opportunity to learn more about yeah. like what the latest trends are and what the latest like greatest is. So, um, like even there's like the iPhone, but there's also Android, which is like a whole nother world to it account is. for and with different like there's native so many different Android and, phones. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's like a whole beast in itself. So if you're starting out. I would say start small and then you can start to expand, but um, yeah, it's really up to you and what you want to get out of it. Totally. All right, so I, I don't know how I feel about this transition. Let's see. I think that it looks like there's a background that's some like kind of moving up. That's on there's a layer in there somewhere on the guy? second artboard, yeah. This one, Let's see about oops, that's not it. Hmm. You see it at the bottom there? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Why is it doing that? Huh. Are the layer names of the, the actual fish layer the same? Because it looks like it's it's also transitioning instead of auto animating. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's on auto animate. Yeah, and usually that happens if the um, if the layer names are not identical. It should be. So this is an allow, mm -hmm. and then this guy is an allow. Oh, is it because I have this as a mask on yeah, the background? Yeah, Okay, so if I add the mask here, it should work, theoretically. Hope so. Fun troubleshooting. I know. <laughs>
see if this works. I know the border radiuses aren't perfect, but. No. Hmm. Something's going on. Oh, well, I will look into that later. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, all the right, joys so of designing. Let's make these all hook up, though. So I got Analow hooked up, and then I also want this one to hook up to that detail page here. Oh, but one thing, you can't have two hotspots coming out of the same component, right? Um, no, but what you can do is you can put basically like an invisible component on top of it. An or, invisible component? So what are you trying to do? So I want this guy to hook up to this page, yeah. but I already have the setup to drag to this carousel. Oh yeah, so carousel. what you could do is have like two invisible rectangles sort of. Yeah. And then one of them will be for drag and then one of them will be for, oh, it's a bit of a workaround, I but see. yeah. So At the moment like you can this. just have one. But then set it to like zero. Yeah. And then have that hook up yeah. to here. Gotcha. And then let's see, drag. So Andres is saying that it'd be nice if you can take the main colors of a picture so you can use that to make custom buttons. Ooh, like yeah. dynamic button colors. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Let's do that for here. So this pink I pulled from up here, but maybe we can make this guy. Um, so this is a symbol right now. I'm just gonna ungroup it so it doesn't override all of the background colors, but right. go back here to design, color drop. What do you think about the orange? I think it works. Orange, or we could go pink. <laughs> I feel like the pinks are too light though. Yeah. That works. I think I like the bolder colors better. I think so. All right, so let's stick with that. Um, and Colin, yeah, the team is definitely, uh, that's, it's on their radar to be able to have multiple uh, wires coming from a single object. All right, so we also wanna hook up these buttons to make sure that they go to the field guide. So I'm gonna have this button start this carousel. And I actually want this to be an overlay on the on the dive side detail page. So we can make this an overlay so that this green will go on top of here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it looks like. So if I click on view field guide, it's an overlay. And then also want it to scroll through. So this should scroll here. That should scroll here. All right. So click on view field guide, you have an overlay. Oops. I think because it's an Did overlay, it, it may not, the drag may not work no. as intended. Okay. I thought I got it working yesterday. Um, what if it's, even if it's a tap, it won't work? A tap should work. Oh, yeah. okay. We'll just do that for now. And then clicking X should take um, the user back to this Raja Ampat page because mm -hmm. it's an overlay. So you can just close the overlay. Yep. And let's see. Oh, I wonder. So I think because it's an overlay, clicking right. anywhere will just close it automatically. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh but, but I have... set up the taps here. Right. So you'd have to click below it or something. I guess I'm abusing the overlay. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. <laughs> this is like totally not a native pattern at all, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's just bring it back. And this is the kind, of, kind of the stuff the team looks for when they're trying to figure out what the next steps for a feature like overlay is. Mm. Okay, so I have my manta rays. Oops. My whale shark and I can close it from that page. Oops. Oh, because I set up the hotspot on the whole page, not the element underneath it. Ah. Let's see if that works better. Nope. 
what did I do? Um, I'm gonna, let's see. That should work, right? Manta ray, go there. And then if I click this, it'll close. Yeah, okay, yeah. there we go. Okay, um, so I think there's that. That feels good. Um, what I wanna do is now is just take these guys and then flesh out like one of the screens just to show you like the styles that I've set up. Totally. So yeah. that we can see how fast um, it is to like recreate extra screens. So basically what I did is I just created one of these guys um, and I just duplicated this page and then repurposed it. Mm -hmm. Um, just because a lot of the skeletal pieces are there, like the status bar and this little notch and the text styles. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and then copy this text. Uh, my layers are kind of set up weird because of weird masking, but let's see. Oh, I think the, the, um, the notch layer is getting in the way. Yeah. Yeah, there it goes. And this one is the candy crab. And then I have my folder of licensed stock photos here, so I'm just gonna drag that in. Oops. It's on this mask. <laughs> and then, oh dear. And then just wanna resize it to make sure it looks okay in that mask. That's a really cool looking crab. Yeah, they're really neat. Yeah. I've never seen one before, but I would like to. It's like the fun thing about this project too, is I get to do a lot of research for the content um, that comes up. So I'm like, oh, I need to go to Indonesia. I know, oh, right? I need to go to the Philippines. I kind of want to try scuba diving now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so apparently this place, Anilau, is the capital of nudibranchs. Oh, the sea slugs. that's where I want to go. So there's like 50 plus species um, that are commonly found oh there. So it's just all sea slugs. If you're watching and you want something to do at home, search Nudibranch. Bronk? <laughs> Nudibranch? Nud I think Nudibranch? Nudibranch? Nudibranch. Nudibranch something. Yeah. There's some really interesting fish on there. There's some scary ones too. Like if you Google um, potato grouper or just look on Adobe stock, actually, so I tried to look up potato grouper on Adobe Stock and it gave me like fish fillets oh. on plates. <laughs> not like, quite the same next thing. Next to potatoes and I was like, oh, I don't, that's not what I wanted, but thanks. You want the live one. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of sad. Um, all right, so basically I'm just doing this for all of these guys and these are my nocturnal creatures. And so that's one thing that I forgot to do yesterday is we wanted to set up, um, like a setting for users to choose whether they were going on a day dive or a right. night dive, because that will determine what kind of creatures you see. So, you know, now that we have like all of these screens set up, we need to figure out where to put the entry point for um, selecting a day or night dive will yep. be. So I think um, just looking through the flow, if I'm, if I'm a user and I'm like, oh, I wanna go diving in the Galapagos, my next question is probably gonna be, like, you probably are gonna choose a dive site first. That's always gonna be the first choice. And then from there, it's like an extra filter, whether it's day or night. So I think the most logical place to put that entry point would be on this dive site detail page. That might make sense, yeah. Whether it's on this page or maybe after I click view field guide, there's mm -hmm. like a little modal that pops up that's like, oh, right. hey, are you gonna be diving at day or night? Yeah, so, because that'll then determine what fish to present, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So, so with that, oh, we got fireworks. <laughs> so it's chat and win time. If you are joining us on Behance, smash that keyboard. We're going to take a break for one quick second. And one of you will win 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. We'll be right back. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, look at the chat go. <laughs> and maybe while you're here, let us know what your favorite fish is. What's your favorite fish? My favorite fish? Yeah. To eat or to see? Oh. <laughs> Are we going there? Oh, I don't know, maybe. Both. Sharks, baby sharks. <laughs> I don't know, I really like tunas. I think they're like mm. overrated sometimes. To eat or, or? No, to, to see. Okay. Like they're, they're like huge creatures. <laughs> They're really huge and like, I've always thought like when I was younger, I always thought yeah. tunas were the little tiny things. That's but they're what I thought some too. of them are massive. They're massive. Yeah. Yeah. They're like super prized in Japan too, right? Are they like really? The bluefin tunas. Oh wow. Yeah. Or to eat. Oh there's there's someone else with tuna. <laughs> oh, this is going quickly. Wow. Yep. They, everyone wants Tampa. stickers. Interesting. Hmm. Well, in just a minute, one of you will win those magical stickers. Maybe you can do some fish stickers <laughs> with tunas on them. And the nice thing about Sticker Mule is it's so easy to like create. Like you just upload your artwork and then they just do all the work for you. There we go. There you go, Ariel. Ariel, <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you just won 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Someone from Behance will get in touch with you uh, about 37 seconds. I'm counting Gus. <laughs> <laughs> and if you did not win the stickers this time, you can go to Adobe Live or stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19. Get 10 stickers for a dollar. Still not, not a bad deal. Yeah. Yeah. I got to do that myself at some point. You can put some stickers on your laptop. And you can stop smashing the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier is upset. Yeah, he is upset. I'm but sorry, Frazier. You'll have more chance to win tomorrow. <laughs> He's still going. All right, well. All right. Um, so now what we want to do is we wanted to add that entry point for setting a day or night time. Um, usually I'll do that on in my sketchbook because oftentimes those requests are a little bit more complicated and I haven't thought that through. So right. I need to like make those mistakes on paper. But I feel like for now we can just commit to it. Um, because we have a lot of these skeletons set up, so. Yeah, sometimes, especially as you're really, you know, designing your artboards on a screen and you're not exactly sure what that flow is gonna look like, yeah. sometimes it's just so much easier. Just grab that paper, grab that pen, and just go crazy. Exactly. Yeah, because if you're adding more screens and you're not quite sure, it gets messy, then uh, it's just easier just to pen on paper. Actually, let's let's switch to pen and paper now because yeah. um, there is a second component that I was also missing yesterday, which is um, when you're diving out like in the remote waters, there's no internet connection. And so a lot of times you'll need to download the guides locally. Right. And there is no entry point to download the guide or to save your guide as like a favorite. So we need to account for that too. Um, so if I go back to... This flow. All right, let's get the GoPro hooked up. There we go. Nice. So yesterday, what we took a look at, so we outlined the happy path flow. Happy path. Uh, I love the happy path. <laughs> Is that like, everyone makes fun of me for saying that. No, I like it. I don't it. know if like, I've never heard of it, but I, I thought I like it was it. like an industry standard. I don't know. It I learned be. it from my VP of product. But oh, nice. Yeah. The happy path. Mm. It just feels fun. It is fun. Um, so this is a happy path flow that we determine, which is to download the app, then you're gonna open the app, go to the home screen, which is what we saw earlier. Um, you're gonna select a dive site to view more details, mm -hmm. and then you'll have the option to open the field guide, and then that will launch the animal gallery. So somewhere in between here, we're going to need to add, so after, I don't know if I can write upside down. Um, <laughs> so we have open field guide, and then this is where we want to branch out and ask day or night. Or... Sure, that works. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> day or night. And then if it's day, then we'll show them the day animals. And then if it's night, we'll show them the night animals. Nice. And there, are there going to be any visual differences between these two or basically the same consistent? I think they will be visually different because mm. yesterday we chatted about like, oh, maybe there's a darker background for the night animals right. and a lighter background for the day animals. And I think that could translate well. It could. It sounds interesting. Yeah. But you really have to get in there, design it and see. Because sometimes right. 
when you're going from like a, a very light or very dark to very light, sometimes it could mess with your eyes. Right. So it's all about experimentation. Yeah. We'll see what happens. And I feel like it could be a nice visual indicator to the user too, to let them know like if yeah. they meant to select day and then they see a dark background, it it tells them, hey, you're probably in the wrong place. So right. um, yeah, let's try it out. Cool. VG, question mark. <laughs> this one too. Um, and the second thing that we wanted to account for is letting users favorite their dive sites mm. or to download them. So the reason why I say favorite is because um, like you you might just want to learn about different dive sites but not necessarily download all of them. So right. it might be presumptuous of us to be like, hey, like if you download this app, you're going to get all 5,000 uh, dive sites downloaded to your phone and then you're going to run out of space and then you'll have to delete like Instagram, right? So can't do, can't do that. <laughs> I've actually did that with my last phone because I ran out of space. So I, I was very selective oh. about the apps that I kept on, and I just kind of kept it around, and it's been working really great. Hmm. Um, yeah. So I think by letting users choose which dive site that they want to download and save, um, that's one way to get around that um, phone storage issue. So. Oh. Where might we put that? I think once you open a field guide, I think it makes sense then to let users save and download content. Yeah. So, so this, wait, open field guide. Oh, open field guide. We're actually going to be in the dive site detail view. So here is where we might ask them to download or save. This is a backward star. <laughs> You're doing a pretty good job at doing this upside down. <laughs> this is a backward star. Um, download or save, and then if yes, yes. Oh, that's a backward S. Yes, then download. Um, if no, then cancel. And then we'll just go back to this view. So, yeah, nobody said design was clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is usually what my, my workspace looks like. It's just like arrows everywhere and crossing things out when things don't make sense. Um, it's no longer a happy path. It's no longer <laughs> a happy path. So let's try to just skip some of these out super quick. Um, so in the dive site detail view, which is this page that we have here, we just need to add an entry point for adding the download entry point. So. I think what makes the most sense is just to like add it to the top here for now. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see how it looks. One thing to consider though is like with mobile because like the thumb region that users might oh, have. Oh right. Like if I put the download button way up here, I'm gonna have to do some like finger yoga to yeah, get to that Yeah, that's a reachability issue. So that's like one thing to look out for. We might actually end up moving this guy down to here. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. We'll play around with it. Um, and then what else do we need to account for? So open field guide. So let's see. I don't think we have a page for the field guide. We have the guide itself and then the button. But the modal is probably going to look something like this. And then we can either do an overlay or maybe it's a full screen takeover. I'm mm -hmm. not sure yet. We'll figure it out. And then ask them, are you going to be diving day or night? And then make those two top targets, which will then take them to this, oops, this guy here. Dive. Time. Oh my god, question mark. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> All right. So. Let's move back to the screen and figure out how that's going to look. So this. So here we're just adding a simple icon, um, which is to download. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to add text for now, and then we can search for an icon later or draw it ourselves. Where do you typically get your icons from? Um. So in, for work, we have a design system that right. we can just pull from. Yeah. If I'm doing it for fun, I'll usually go to like icons8.com 
or uh, look at Noun Project for inspiration, and mm, then try to that's a good one. like redraw it with like my own tweaks. Yeah. Um, or Adobe Stock actually has some too, right? I think yeah, I think so. Yeah, they have vector they have, illustrations. Yeah, vector illustrations. There's also the uh, the marketplace the market uh, through the Creative place. Cloud app that has a few, I think, free Where ones. Is that? Yeah, if you go up there and go to assets, I think, and then market, and you just search in there, you can search for either icons or specific icons or things like that. And Ooh. yeah, and those are free. They're free? They're free. People just like share them with I the think world so. to use? Yeah, it's That's a little awesome. known fact about the Creative Cloud app. Oh, yeah, because last time I was designing the beer app, I pulled a star icon from Adobe Stock. Oh, yeah. I was like really shocked that they had vector illustrations. They do, they there. have a lot. But this is cool. I've downloaded a bunch of different packs from Adobe Stock uh, Illustrator files that have just hundreds and hundreds of icons, because now you can import those directly into Adobe XD mm. and basically turn those into like icon or sticker sheets and then yeah. use them as link symbols, which is super cool. Huh. Yeah. Can I drag and drop? I don't think so. Okay. I think you have to save it to a library and then you can open it up in XD. And for those in the chat, if you do have other resources that you want to share, whether it's icons or fonts or whatever it is, throw it in the chat and uh, you know we'll, we'll take a look at some of them because there's always things that I don't know or Christine doesn't know or Chris Cannon probably doesn't know most of it. <laughs> oh, hey, Chris. <laughs> what do you do for fun? I search Adobe Stock for great icons. <laughs> That's basically what we do as designers. We just search stock and search for new resources. Okay. I do it way too often. I can't add this one. Is it not free? Or did I already add it? Oh. Hmm. It might be there. I don't know. You oh. might have to check your library. Okay. Yeah. Um. One thing that I'm curious about is yep. like what what is a universal download icon? Like, what do people resonate with? Because we have this debate, like, is it this icon or is it like the one with the cloud? Do people understand what the cloud is or is it this or is this the universal icon for email inbox? I don't know. It's, That's a good question. It's a very contentious question yeah. at our work. I typically stay towards like that one there with just a little box at the bottom. This like one? Like that one, this one with a down arrow? No, yeah. not that one. Like that one there. Yeah. But. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. The cloud one kind of gives me the idea that it's up in the cloud somewhere, which I guess technically it is, but yeah. it's very for a very specific purpose. I guess Adobe Cloud uses the cloud icon for their download. Oh, they do, yeah. Um, interesting. All right, let's open up stock and see if I can get those icons from my library. You can also access your um, Creative Cloud Libraries from XD. What? Mm-hmm. Under the file menu. This one? Yep. Oh, I think I learned this last time and I completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, there's my star icon from last time. Oh, there it is. Let's drag that in. No, actually, we're not using that. We're using download. Um, dive sites. Oh, oh! There they are. So I saved it multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> All That's five of why. them. That's why. All right. Let's try this one. Hey, Steve and Ahmed and Marco and Alexander. A lot of new people just popping in. Why is XD not compatible in Windows 7? I think because it's a it's an older operating system, so it doesn't make sense to support it from an engineering perspective. But I'm not exactly sure the reason, but I would imagine it's something along those lines. Oops, what am I doing? Font awesome, flat icon, Google materials, always good. Oh, yeah. Flat icons, popular one. Yep. I'm a big fan of the Nucleo library. The what? Nucleo. Nucleo? Yeah, nucleoapp.com. I think um, it, it, it acts as a, an icon library. And also, if you pay, I think it's $99 or something, you get 35,000 icons, oh. which is cool. And I, I've per I, long time ago, I purchased the symbol icons. And I was able to just drag those into Nucleo. So even if oh. I don't have Nucleo's icon set, yeah. I can still use all my previous icon set in there. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. Things you learn. Chris says you dropped it on an image. Oh, oops. This one? No, I think she's okay. Possibly. I dropped it on an image before. Oh, before? But I, I redragged it uh, in. 
Can I change the color of this? Yeah, you icon? can. So you can break that symbol. Uh, just un unlink it, and then you can change it from there. But it's an image, right? Oh, is it? I don't know. There's a little photo icon. Oh, it so is an image, so it's, it's not a vector image. graphic. Is there a way to filter for vector graphics from the marketplace? I'm not sure. Well, that could, this could be oh, a bust. Categories. <laughs> oh, vector. Oh, vectors. There we go. Oh, icons. I think it's Wait. the same one. Mm, try vectors try instead. Vectors, yeah. yeah. One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael Cena. I'm going to use this icon. <laughs> Can anyone just contribute to the marketplace? I believe so, yeah. So if anyone wants to create a download <laughs> icon for me and contribute Quick, it to the marketplace. Do it now. Um, let me know. <laughs> and as Adobe Live just said, the amazing Gus spot, we have about 43 minutes left in the challenge for today. And uh, we have a bunch in there, but we definitely need more. And you can win, excuse me, you can win a one year subscription to the Creative Cloud, which is awesome. Uh, okay, so we will make this smaller. This will just be a placeholder for now. Yeah. And then get rid of that. Oops. Bring that over here. Um, I think, so I like my icons to be like 24 by 24. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do that. 24. Yeah, close enough. It's only placeholder. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to hang out there. Um, this is definitely not in the reachability zone. Right. Maybe here? Or down here? Oh, maybe down there. Because I fear that if you put it beside the, the actual like text name at the top, yeah. if, if there's a really long name of a fish, then it right. might bounce into it or cut it off or something. Okay, this is going to hang out here for a little bit. Maybe there are some other actions in the future that we might want to consider and they can all like kind of right. be a family here. Yeah, you might put um, a star icon to favorite it or yeah. a book icon if you want to book that one or something like that. Right. So. Or I guess you don't book a fish, but <laughs> those are places, right? They are. They okay, are. okay. Yeah. Never mind. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got that one there. A fork and a knife. Never mind. A fork. <laughs> That's so gruesome. <laughs> Actually, when I was, yeah, when I was looking up baby shark stock photos, there were a bunch of like. I can only poor, imagine what's going <laughs> to. Poor ones. Um, yeah, if you want to be depressed for the rest of the day, just look that up. Okay. Chris says you're a better designer than him. Oh, that's not true. I, no, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> We are all great designers. Um, okay, so now Chris I and I have a great relationship. <laughs> so now I want to add um, the entry points to select the day or the night dive. Um, I think that's going to also be an overlay, which might mean we have to reconsider this interaction pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this is not going to be an overlay, and it'll just be like a new view, and then you can like swipe through it. <laughs> um, so. Let's try and mock that up. Cool. What kind of, uh, you know, thinking about overlays mm -hmm. for, for a, a second, what kind of improvements would you like to see in terms of overlay functionality? For overlays? Yeah. Because oh. I feel that, you know, since since Auto Animate has been released, yeah. myself and other designers and probably yourself as well have been kind of gravitating that way because yeah. there's more animation features. But I think overlays still has a big role in XD because the fact you can just create one and yeah. have it on multiple screens. Yeah. So what else would you like to see for overlays? Putting you on the spot. I know. That's a good question. I'll tell you in five minutes after okay. I try this out. <laughs> that works. So. Let's make this box that will overlay. Actually, this this doesn't even need to be on this artboard, right? Because it's going to be an overlay. Yep. I can just draw this like here. Um, whoa, when are you planning to dive? 
So I know like we're in a high fidelity mock-up phase, but I'm just gonna wireframe this out and just do it all in the same file because mm -hmm. it's faster. You can make this centered. Um, probably need a label. Okay. Night. Let's look up some icons from this marketplace now that I know it exists. Day. Oops. Is like a sun download icon or is that a sunset? Oh, sunset. It could be a download icon. Oh, Michael Cena coming through again. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's got those downloads on point. Let's use sun. Actually, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that an icon um, works in this case? Because, so the one question that I have is like the rest of the app is very photo realistic right so does it make more sense to use a photo of like day and night or does it make sense to use an icon of day hmm. and night I think if you use photos it might be it might be too busy yeah leaves too much to interpretation I think so okay icons are always good because it's straight to the point they're easy to look at right so many choices. Oh, gonna... Kirill just updated XD and is discovering auto animate and a bunch of other things. Oh man, <laughs> Kirill, you are gonna learn so much and be so excited. And if you thought that was something, wait till the end of this year. No, I don't mean like specifically, just this year we have a lot, big roadmap of really cool stuff coming up. You're gonna like it. I feel like XD, like the auto animate makes it too easy to be a designer. In some ways, yeah. Like you really don't have to do any work to make it look good. It's so good, I like it. But at the same time, I, I do like the challenge of getting really fancy with animation. So personally, I would love to see like a timeline or additional mm -hmm. options for auto animate. But the team is looking into that stuff, mm -hmm. but you know, we'll see what happens. You know what's gonna happen. You're just not telling me. I know us, some right? things. Not everything, though, but definitely some things. Okay, so I have two icons that we can look at. Here's the sun. Here's the moon. If you want to get really fancy, you can uh, you can create like a little uh, what's it called? Those uh, oh, those you know, like a switch where you can go from like day or night and oh. a cool little animation going on. Yeah, we could do that. That might be a bit too fancy right now, but okay, it's possible. Let me resize Actually, these. Actually, I have something somewhere. I don't know where. I'm going to look for it. <laughs> and I can always share it with you as a cloud document. Yeah, that's right. Mm. You can pair design. Yeah. Day and night. Oh, there's, I think there's a switch in the iOS. Kit oh, there probably from, is, yeah. Right? Oops. Do I have it? <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, I don't like creating things from scratch. There's so many resources out there to just copy paste, especially because this is from Apple. Um, this is like all ready to use and you don't have to yeah. license anything because they're mostly for mockups. Yeah, see, they have a little switch here. Oh, there you go. So let's copy this. So I created this a while back. That could be like a little fun day Ooh. And night. I don't know if it's too much. It might be too much, but. That's fun. It's a possibility. Yeah. You can can put you it share maybe that the, with me? Yeah, you can pay, maybe, put, oh, there's my screen. Yeah, there's a little switch. It goes from day and night. There's a little animation. And if we modify this, you can put it basically in the middle so it's neutral, and then the person could swipe to the right for night or swipe to the left for day. Did you create that in XD or did you use other products too? It was XD, but actually the um, the graphics were an imported Illustrator file. Oh. And then I just used masks and auto animate to do the rest. Gotcha. Yeah. It's like a fun little micro interaction. It is, yeah. This is when I was working on my uh, auto animate UI kit. There's a lot of different things. Whoa. But yeah. 
Fun stuff you can do. Huh. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put this in as a placeholder for now, but we'll see how that looks. Okay. Oops. Uh, put this one. This one. <laughs> Ungroup this. I do. I did something weird. Uh oh. Um, I did not create an artboard. I should probably create an artboard. Oh yeah. So that they're not floating in like black space. <laughs> okay. What am I doing? I think you have to pull the left, the right side. There you go. I don't know why my sun is so big. What is this rectangle? Oh, okay. All right, so this is my dive time overlay. Mm, Roy is asking, is it possible to create an animated loop maybe as a reusable symbol? So you can you can create loopable animations in XD basically by looping back to the first artboard from the last one. But at the moment, you cannot save those as a symbol. But it's something I have personally talked to the T XD team about because that's I would love to see that. Imagine creating these little tiny micro interactions saving them as symbols and then being able to grab those symbols and putting them inside your document so you don't have to have like multiple artboards for tiny little animations. Um, so that's, that's something the team is definitely looking into. That's all I can say. I kind of, I, I, it's my like token answer for everything. The team is looking <laughs> into it. Is Talon on here today? <laughs> <laughs> he might be Hi, watching. <laughs> They're making sure I don't say anything I shouldn't be saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got my overlay. Let's try to see what this looks like. So I click on view field guide. Mm -hmm. Ooh. There's my overlay. Yep. Um, is there a way to like black out the background? Not with an overlay, but that's one of the. Okay. That could be one of your improvement. It's longer ideas. than five minutes, but <laughs> That's <okay>. got, it. <laughs> got there. Yes. Okay. So. I have actually suggested that to the team as well. But if I wanted to do it now, then I would have to create it as the same size and then add a black rectangle. Yeah. And you wouldn't and then... really be able to animate, like do any slide up because then the whole background would come with it. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. We'll live with it for now. Yeah. It's not too bad. No, it's not. You feel good. Yeah. And then it like dissolves in. That's mm -hmm. nice. And then if I click day, it should take me to my day animals. And then if I click night, it should take me to my night animals. I think the candy crab is a night animal. So another thing that I like to do, like, I mean, this is more like hygiene, I guess, or logistical <laughs> preferences, but I try to map out the flow of the app in my file. So whenever something forks like this, I'll just put them like one on top of another. Yeah. And say like, okay, this is, it forks here. So you can visually see mm. what's happening. That makes sense. Um, so not everything is gonna be in a straight line, like the happy path, the linear path. Right. But you'll be able to see where things go. And then, okay. So I think now now that we have this wireframe, I think it works. The flow feels pretty good from what I can tell. So I scroll down, click view field guide. I'm gonna be diving during the day. Here's my day animal. If not, I'm gonna be diving at night. I'll see my night animals. Love it. So now that we, we're okay with this, I think we should prettify it, right? Yeah. So we don't want this janky white box yep. to just be in the mu middle of this um, very photorealistic app. 
Yeah, and I'm experimenting with that switch. I don't know if it's gonna work exactly the way I want it to, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> So mostly for something like this one, I'm trying to apply visual style, it's trial and error, um, to see what works. Yeah. Oops. Uh, character styles. I think I want these rectangles to be rounded corners because I don't really have too many straight edges in this app just because the font is also pretty geometric. So I'm going to make these ones rounded too. Yellow is very nuclear, so I'm gonna try oh, to choose is. one. That's, that's quite a yellow. <laughs> choose <laughs> one that's like already in a photo. But I don't know if that's working out. I was thinking like maybe day could be like sun yellow and then night could be like blue midnight, mm -hmm. but it might look awful. <laughs> Let's try it. This is night, this is day. So Val said she likes the yellow. Oh, it's, you like the it's yellow? It's like a mustard. Does it feel too flat? Or do you think it needs more depth? I don't think it needs much more depth. It's not a, you know, it's not a very splashy screen, so you probably don't want to go too much with it. Right, that makes sense. Oh, how is this <laughs> icon created? So many groups. So I'm just trying to get to the path so that I can recolor this, um, but it looks like it was grouped in an interesting way. I'm just ungrouping everything to get to the base of it. This guy, same deal, I'm just gonna ungroup it so I can get to the base of the vector lines and then recolor it. Oh, there's only one. Day, night, no border. Should be the same size, maybe like 140. And then center it. What did I do? Sometimes selecting those little tiny elements are difficult. Yeah, I accidentally um, gathered the rectangle into that oh. thing. So there we go. Day. We have just about 25 minutes left in the challenge. If you are participating, get those entries in. So Ahmed is saying that the he thinks the sun should be a little bit bigger. Oh, I kind of see what he's call. saying. I know the width is probably the same, right? But the height is throwing it off. Yeah, it should be the same height as this guy, right? Yeah. How tall is this guy? Uh, 31.35. That's a odd, <laughs> odd dimension. I'm gonna make it 32. 32 and then center everything. And then the sun will also be 32. I can never select it. Uh, okay. Oh, 
But it's already 36. I see, like it's optically, optically it just looks smaller. It does. Because it well, includes it's a little versions, like yeah. rays. Whoa, what did I do? Oh, I think because responsive resize is turned on. Oh. Yeah. There you go. I feel like this stroke could be a little bit thicker to match the stroke of this guy. Yeah, I was going to say, on the moon, it looks a little thin. I'm just going to hack it <laughs> at a border. Let's see if it works. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> that works. You shouldn't do that if you're trying to hand off the asset to an engineer, but don't tell it. For now. <laughs> this is just for fun, so yeah. I, I'm OK with it. All right, That's so looking let's, pretty good. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So this one, scroll down, view field guide. When are you planning to dive, day or night? Um, I think because it's like a black solid. Yeah, it kind of it blends in. Looks a little odd. What hmm. do you think we can do? Like add a drop shadow? <laughs> Drop shadow may not work too much because the black. it'll be on black. Change the background color, maybe? Maybe a tiny bit. Or maybe decrease. Uh, no, that's not going to work. Hmm. It's also kind of like there's things screaming at me, like the view field guide button, and then yeah. day, and then night. It's a lot to. Yeah, I would. If it was me, I would probably ditch the overlay idea yeah, and go with another artboard. Yeah. And then that way you can darken the background. You can also possibly do like a blurred background to get oh, even yeah. fancier. And that'll probably add a little bit of depth, like you were talking about earlier. Let's do that. The good thing is, I already have my content here, so I can just <laughs> drag yep. that in, right? Let me get rid of this. Copy all these guys. Paste that here. I'm just going to name this over or selector. And then download all this because we don't need it. There you go. And let's see how that looks. Oh, yeah. oops. Okay. Do you feel guide? That was weird. Oh, because you have uh, auto animate turned on, so oh. it's throwing everything off. Um, transition, preserve scroll. Should I make it faster? Will that help? A little bit, but I think because the layers are all different and the artboard size is also different. Oh, yeah. I see. Should I like recreate the selector layer on the previous artboard and then like have it opacity zero so that it will oh, animate. Yeah, you can do, put that in a group and then just copy and paste it over there. Uh, does that work? Weird. <laughs> yeah, I think the There's scroll the scroll on. position is throwing it off because it's scrolling back up and then it's uh, I coming see. down. Yeah. Whenever you're working with longer artboards and and buttons that are below it, auto animate kind of gets confused. That's a little bit better. Yeah. It's still doing like a weird fade thing, but that's okay. Um. Anyways, so 
now that we have this green, I think for the most part it should work okay. So this will hook up to the day animals and then this will hook up to the night animals. I'm pretty happy with like it being on a standalone screen. Yeah. It reads a lot better. It does. Um, Jan is saying you can make the day card white with black outlines and the night card black with white outlines. It's an interesting oh. idea. Huh, let's try that. So anytime I like to explore, I just duplicate the artboard. Um, just so that we can see them side by side instead mm -hmm. of having to click Control Z and then remembering <laughs> what you created. Yep. So you said um, day with white outline. Oops, not fill, white outline. And then we can. No, I think the opposite. So day is a white card. A oh, white card. With black outlines. White card with black outlines. Yeah. And then so this would be black too. Sun will be black as well. Have you seen that like meme where are you a designer that selects black this way or selects black this way? I haven't seen that, no. I've only ever selected black on the left. On the left? Yeah. Really? I don't know. I feel like I go both ways. But oh. it was like all over <laughs> Twitter <laughs> one one year. I forget which year. Um, okay. I guess selecting on the right would save you like a tiny little bit of time because you're going that way anyway to select the... Yeah, I think that's what I do, actually. Hmm. Yeah, that feels more natural than like going this way. But white, there's only one direction. Yeah. Okay, there's my border. Um, one thing to note is like adding the border is making this guy look a little bit taller. Because can you You can do an inside border, yeah. Where the inside border is? Yep. Is it this guy? I think it's the other. Oops. I think it was inside, maybe. Is it this? Huh. Um, I was going to say another way to do it is you can just add a border here and make this white. Oh, yeah. Because the background is black already, so. Now it's the same thing. There you go. <laughs> that works. Uh, and then we can like bump these guys down a little bit. So in chat, if you're if you're watching, let us know wh which one you like better. The, the one at the top with the black and white or the one below that with the yellow and black. This feels good. It does. It, yeah. It feels more like a setting page right. rather than like... Like this feels like it's trying a little too hard to be the content yeah. because it's so colorful, whereas this is very like day or night. Although I will say, playing devil's advocate for a second, um, at in this stage right now, it looks like day is selected and then night is like an inactive state. Mm. But I mean, maybe that's what you want, I don't know. Yeah. Or if we kept the toggle, we can just make the whole background be like, like switch a color. Right. So like if it's day, then the whole background switches to like mm -hmm. orange and then has day right in here. And then yeah. if it's night, we can toggle it back. It's a lot of uh, mixed opinions. <laughs> I think top might be winning, but some people like the pop of color. Gotcha. I think it might be top. Top is the majority. We're going to so. go with the majority. Thanks for the suggestion. Good job, Jan. So we're making it this guy. Okay, cool. So now that we, so we got our base functionality back in, um, that comes up a lot. Like there's usually stakeholders at see designs at the last minute and they're like, wait, did you think about this? We time. need this in here. And you're like, oh, but I already have my design <laughs> like <laughs> approved by the design team. And so you need to like iterate. And so this is just like a, I guess a very simple example yeah. of how that could look like. You should probably keep the bottom one just in case because you know a client's going to come back and just say, <laughs> can you make it pop? Yeah. And you're like, is this poppy enough yeah. for you? Cool. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to do today is decide on a name. Oh, that's right. So with the time that we have left, I was thinking name suggestions. Yeah, so Jan had the name Diver yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but let us know in the chat, what name should this scuba diving app have? And uh, we'll do a, we'll maybe pick a few of them and do like a little bit of a poll if we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. So Diver was one, mm -hmm. but without the E, right? Yeah, just Diver. Like diver. The, 
I don't know what you call those things. What things? When you drop the E, there's a name for that type oh, of- Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't remember what it is. It's like very startup-y. Startup-y, like. maybe, yeah. Or like changing one of the letters, like the I to an E. Right. Like that, like, it doesn't work, but. Yeah. Val likes diver. I think that might be it. Diver. <laughs> I'd love to hear some more, but we might go with that. Make the logo Shark bigger. bait. <laughs> Shark bait. So one thing that I'm doing right now is um, anytime I am tasked with designing a logo, especially for like freelance clients, mm -hmm. I get a little bit lazy and I just rely on text to be the logo. Oh yeah, all uh, the time. And then I'll like try to choose a font that looks fun and works with the rest of the app. Yeah. So the base that I always start with is whatever font that I'm using currently in okay. the product. And then trying to spell out the logo here. And so this is using, I think it's using like the country character style. Yeah, that was the country one. But we can just make these both black. Actually, let's make it this color, the color of the background. Anel says, just dive. And then Jan says, sea creatures. I think yesterday there was someone who uh, suggested, let's see, S-E-A. <gasps> that was a fun one. Make these 48. Diver, shark bait, there is sea creatures. Just dive. Diana says water explorer. <laughs> <laughs> explorer with basically no vowels except the E. Kind of sounds like you're babbling underwater. Yeah. <laughs> Even autocorrects, like, I don't know what to do with this. Doris Way. Sea and meat. Doris Way. Oh, Dor is it Dory's Way? Like Finding Nemo Dory? That's what I thought originally. Dive with a Y. Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> So usually, um, like if I don't have you guys to rely on, um, then I'll I'll do like a similar thing with the mind mapping and you know try to think about the product that I'm creating and who I'm creating it for, and mm -hmm. then see if there's any like relevant words that come up or like something that you can logoify, and so. That's usually what I'll do, but this is much easier. Just asking for suggestions. Right, I wish we had these so people many. all the time. I know. Deep blue. Nice. Deep sea. Oh, like S E E. Deep Creative. Deep sea. Oh, thank you, Val, for creating the poll. Oh, fancy. We have an actual poll now. <laughs> So go to that link that Val just posted and vote on your favorite. And then uh, in a few minutes, we'll choose one and get that going. Let's see if I can bring it up here. So another thing that I'll try to do is like, so I'll start off with the base font, um, but then I'll also try like modifying it. So. You know, maybe I want to play with capitalization or I right. want to play with like text um, or letter styling. Do I want to transform into all uppercase or all lowercase mm -hmm. and just see how that looks? So, I don't know. For me, it's like purely a visual exercise, but sometimes it helps. It helps you eliminate some of these easily because they might not work with like the layout that you have or the use cases that you're trying for. That's true. And then some of them you can get like super fancy on like just dive, for example, you can take the word dive and maybe put it upside down. 
or Ooh. something cra like you're getting underwater or something crazy like that. I don't know if that'll work, but it's things you can try. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. But like flip it backwards. Dive. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not. It sounded better Just in my dive. head. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth trying. Try like uppercase everything. Is there a um, easy way to like text transform? Yeah, so there's a plugin right now. Until I mean, like text transform is being worked on, but there's a plugin called Change Case. Uh huh. There it is. Snorkel. Change case uppercase. Oh, so much yeah. easier. There you go. Plugins are awesome. Yeah. Who um, works on the plugins? Are they just people who yeah, want just, to improve XD yeah. and then propose it? Yep. Do you then, guys ever like incorporate the plugins into the native product? Um, I don't think we've done that yet, but I know that some of the functionality, like changing the case on text, is being worked on natively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we haven't at the moment actually taken a plugin and put it into the product. I don't know if there's any plans to do that. Gotcha. But there's some really good developers out there creating some really interesting plugins that definitely expand on XD's functionality. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the overflow integration. I was super excited about that. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. So let's see. Refreshing the poll, and looks like Diver has 50% of the votes. Diver. Yeah. All right. That might be it. That was easy. <laughs> it's the first one. It's stuck. All right, so let's go back up here. I kind of like the look of this. I mean, I feel the like case, it yeah. works. I and, so. and just like using Mr. Eves, yep. right? Let's see if it works and doesn't look too, too much like it's part of the product. Um, so I have this as a symbol, I thought, unless I set it up wrong. And then if I push, can I push the override? There's, yeah, push override. No, did that not work? So I have it in my base symbol yeah. as a text, and then I just updated the text content. Mm -hmm. It should have worked. And then I was hoping that it would push to these guys too. Those are other, those are symbols, right? Over they there. are, yeah. They're all BG. Oh, it's because I named it wrong. Oh. BG. Will that work? Push overrides. There we there go. There it goes. All right, diver it is. Sweet. Does it need to be there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know we just did all this work too. <laughs> Um, determine a name, but now I'm like, is it kind of distracting? Mm, it might be. I think you might be able to create like a cool splash screen with the word diver on it. Yeah, let's do that. And then it could just float away. That doesn't need to be there. Ooh. That feels fun. It does. I like that. This could be like an onboarding carousel. I there don't you know. go. Just keep it there. <laughs> diver. Did somebody say diver with a veto? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with diver? Use a Y. We want to use seek. Oh, seek. Seek. <laughs> Seek. Shut down Adobe Live now. <laughs> Gus has too much power. Maybe Seek can be the subtitle. Will, will that help? Is that making it less important? I don't know. Just put like 1% opacity at the bottom just to satisfy <laughs> Gus. Seek. 
There it's an go. Easter egg. It is. Oops. I'm just gonna ungroup this because we don't necessarily need it to be a symbol. Yeah, I think I agree, I agree with Val. I like the eye better. You like the eye? Yeah. Is it because then it's all on the baseline? I think so. Visually, it looks a little bit better. Yeah. All right, there's Diver, Seek our logo. Seek to explore. Mm. Seek to explore. <laughs> <laughs> it's there, Gus. <laughs> so we, maybe it can just be like the loading screen. Yeah. You don't need to do anything, and then mm -hmm. it'll automatically add, animate to this. But now that we got rid of the top here, it kind of looks like visually unbalanced. Maybe we just need to center these. Yeah, move them up a little bit. Or like add. Should we add a header that says like today's most popular dive site? Oh yeah, you or can do that. Yeah. See what that looks like. The logo looks too much like DivX. DivX. Does it? I don't remember what, what is DivX. DivX. It's like a codec, video codec, I think. It's old school, I believe. Yeah. I mean, I think it's different enough. It'll work. Oh, we have about two and a half minutes left to get those challenges in, so go submit them. And we have a few to look through. think about this? Is this header too long? I think it might be. Today. Popular. Popular today. Maybe. Popular today. Colon? No colon. <laughs> no. <laughs> does this header work? Or does it need to be something else? Ooh. Oh, now that I have the cool plugin. Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. This is usually what I do. I just like sit there and I click on the same buttons over and over again, even though I've seen it That's already. really what designers do. <laughs> that sounds like a meme. It's like engineers waiting for their code to compile. Yeah. I'm just like, is this one or this one or this one? Or in the font one? picker just pressing down, down, yeah. down, down. Don't like that one, don't like that one. Then you'll go back to the top and do it all over again. Yeah, because <laughs> you lose your spot. Yeah. Or you just get to the bottom, you just can't commit to a font. <laughs> I think this might work. I just don't want it to compete with the, like, the text down here yeah. is my only thing. What about decreasing the opacity a little bit? Ooh, good call. Like it's fading into the water. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Too bad we don't have like an overlay blend mode or something. Yeah. That then it can neat. interact with the background. Ooh. Mm. Is that coming? <laughs> Maybe. Although, I think, was it last week? I think it was last week, Talon. You know Talon. Yeah. Uh, he was designing what blend modes could look like in Adobe XD live. Oh. Yeah. That was kind of cool. Huh. I feel like it would be so scary to design XD live. I know, right? Do you get a lot of like feedback um, from users? Oh yeah, they love those streams. And yeah. they're, they're always giving feedback. And that was actually the, we did a poll in Slack um, which feature Talon should be designing live. And there were a few different options and blend modes got a huge response. Really? Yeah. And he was, it was, it was interesting because he was saying that uh, when, they, when they're thinking about which features to actually start developing, a big part of that is presenting what the vision of that feature could look like. 
So by Talon designing that live, they're one step closer to making that a reality. Huh. Which is interesting. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Chris says, can I like, has bigger logo, please? Bigger logo? <laughs> yeah. Bigger than this? <laughs> no. How big do you want it? Oh my gosh. This, this big? <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't hate it. But I kind of like, maybe compromise. Yeah. 150? I think that looks okay. Yeah. I would go super light, but that's just, I know Chris hates light fonts. No, I don't mean, I light? mean like oh. the weight. Oh. Chris hates it, but I love it. I love, oh, you don't have So light. there's only two Aww. weights for Mr. Eve's, <laughs> which is unfortunate. So like, Mr. Eve. The only, I mean, I guess you could, oh, but it's on a pattern okay. background. You It'll just, do. Usually what I do, I know like typographers are gonna hate this, but I'll like just add a border that matches the background color yeah, and have I've it done inside. That before. Um, All righty. So once you wrap that up, we're gonna we're gonna do some challenge reviews. Let's do it. Okay, give me one second. Okay, I think I got them all. Okay, let's switch over to my screen. Let me move this GoPro out of the way. So this first one is from Ashy, and again, the challenge was to design a I think it was a, a goal management or goal tracking application. Mm. So this. I, it's a cute little <laughs> icon. Did you draw that yourself? Yeah, actually, I know she was here earlier. I don't know if she's still here, but if she's still here, let, let us know if you drew that yourself. I love the little swirls, the curls at the top. <laughs> so it's called Stresso. Interesting, stress management. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. Breathing, exercise, and you can, oh, the, oh she, did she lick up everything? That's it looks cool. Like it. Breathing. All right. I would say for this, uh, maybe make the, the font a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. This feels a little small to me and maybe a li even li a little bit, uh, you know, too close together. I think also one thing that might help um, is if you're, if you're opening this app and you just wanna easily scan the content, one thing that might help is separating the number bullets from the body. Because mm. right now, if you see like on number three, with is going to the edge. Yeah. So having that like separation. I don't, I think there's a number bullet style in XD, no? No, oh, not yet. That's sorry, also being worked on. <laughs> is there a plugin for it? Uh, bullets? There might be. Yeah. It's very possible. Or you can just like hack it by having two different text layers and then adding that manually. Yeah. Let's go back to exercise. Okay, it's the same deal. And sleep. Meditation, I need some meditation in my life. Water. Well, that's an important one. Water's good, yeah. And then this one goes to happy face. <laughs> cool, cute. Yeah, so I would definitely um, make, make a few of those tweaks. What do you think about the green? I like green, green yeah. is a calming color. It um, is. I would think like green or blue for a stress management app is probably yeah. a safe bet. Stay away from red, Yeah, not no good. Red. <laughs> But yeah, um, green is nice. One thing I will say is on the exercise, like the pills where you're choosing all the different types of um, things to do, yep. having that green with the white text, the contrast is a little bit um, low. Right. So you might want to consider like choosing another green or choosing a different font color yep. just to make sure that that is readable. Cool. Good job, Ashi. Thank you. Next we have, I believe this was Ahmed. All right, let's see. Where's the hot spots? There's a hot spot. So the, the home screen's a bunch of goals. Some are crossed out at the bottom. Nice little navigation bar. Nice. Oop. Okay, oh, there's Ooh, a little wait, animation. Wait, what, Can you go back? I think so. Back. Maybe. Oops, sorry, did I break the floor? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. There we go. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, it's so a little a little animation. It probably didn't animate because um, it kind of did the transition because mm -hmm. auto animate isn't available on the web yet, but soon. And then this one here as well. Oh, well oh, that's fancy. That's fun. It's yeah. like giving you a summary of all of your accomplishments and things to be proud of. Yeah. And it goes back to done. My life, Leo. Ooh. All right. I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Are these your goals for the day? Mike Dunno? 
Hmm. Yeah, the, it's a good point because it's hard to just to really figure out what this means. Or I guess this is your current progress, maybe. We moved to a different um, page on the tab. Oh, so we, we did. We were on the to do page, I guess. Oh, so we were here. Yeah, and, and then, then ah, and then you can add a new goal. Got it. And then. I guess like the first page is more about biometrics. Mm. Would be my guess. Okay, yeah, the so current heartbeat is like 72 beats per minute. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can click on it. Wow, this is pretty in depth. Yeah. Submit. What okay. are you submitting? Uh, my question. Yeah. Or you can click on the heart circle. Submit. Let's see what happens. Okay, it goes back here. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused what you're submitting, but I like the I like the design. This is kind of neat. It the, feels fun. Yeah, it does feel fun. And the animation on the to do was a lot of fun too, because yeah. it's like a fun celebratory moment as yep. you're checking something off. Like that feeling of just crossing something off your to do list. Right. Is being recreated. Here, yeah. The only thing nice. I would have suggested on that. Can I? Oh boy. Can I go back to the beginning? <laughs> Yeah, so this one, when you click on um, like one of them at the top, mm -hmm. I would love to see this kind of go down to the bottom under done. Mm -hmm. That could be fun. Could be a fun animation as well. Awesome. Good job, Ahmed. Nice. Next, we have Heather, who was also in the chat. I know she was pounding her keyboard while we had <laughs> chat and win. Um, I like the fact that she kind of gave us a little bit of a description of the top. Oh, nice. And then we have... A video. Let's see if I can. There we go. Let me hide my dock. It's a bit bigger. There we go. Let's see. Reach. So it looks like it's a bit of an onboarding experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a fun animation there. Okay, there's there's definitely a lot going on. I would say probably the um, the curly fonts are a little bit difficult to read on this section here. What do you think? Yeah, it feels more like a display font. Um, if you're going to be incorporating body copy in the UI, I would consider like a a sans serif or a serif font. Yeah. This, this is like a really great font for the logo though. The logo looks really good with this yeah. one. <laughs> Star Wars is awesome. That, that's probably for Val. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Nice. Good job, Heather. Thank you. And then finally we have uh, G2. I love the presentation already. I haven't even seen the app yet. There's a splash screen. It's called My Goal. Nice colors. I also love when mockups are used, so you can kind of see the the mm. application in a real kind of real world, world setting, missing the notch. <laughs> One hundred points. Everyone loves points when they're trying to get something done. Nice. And a little animation. Let's see. Ooh, that was fun. Yeah. Cute. I like the like the mono not the monochromatic look, but there's like a very distinct visual style and it feels super clean and yeah. um, it's really easy to read all the content, which is great. Yeah. Awesome. Great job, everyone. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and look at the other entries that came in earlier today. But we, we saw some great entries. Yeah. I love these little challenges. And if you missed um, today's challenges, we will have more in the future. Uh, tomorrow is going to be portfolio reviews. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to review portfolios all day tomorrow. It's going to be fun. We're going to go to space. What do you win as part of the challenge? Is it the one year? This is the one year. One year yeah. creative cloud? Nice. Yep. Awesome. Cool. So let's hop back over to your screen. We have about 15 minutes left before we wrap things up. 
Yep. Um, let's see. So we, we made the <laughs> Diver logo 150 points. Just for Chris. Just for Chris. And then, um, so one thing that I did is because we removed the logo up here, I just kind of bumped everything up to make it feel a little bit more centered. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we could consider is making these bigger, but I feel like if we do, then the little affordances on the side here might get cut off. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I want to keep it here. Um, let's see, what else are we doing? So what else should we do today? Um, one thing that might be... Let me just test this on my phone to see how it feels, if that yep. works. Let's see. going seven <laughs> percent we've got a lot of images in here so it's a big file and I think there were at, at the beginning we saw some uh, some weirdness going on with the auto animate so maybe we can go back and make mm -hmm. sure all the layer names are up to date so that all the animation takes place and then maybe Good animate call. the masks as well and get fancy another thing that we should probably do is what does it look like when you've clicked on this download button. Oh, right. I know it was just a placeholder and yeah. we completely neglected <laughs> it again for a second time. Um, but I think this is an opportunity for like a fun little like, oh, your thing has been saved. Or, yep. Oh, your thing has been downloaded. Totally. So while we're waiting for this guy to load, why don't we look for some buttons or icons that signal like, okay, this thing has been saved to my local device. Right. Uh, maybe a check mark might be appropriate. Dude, this thing is great. I, I know. Use it it's all the really time cool. Now. A lot of people don't know it's there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, okay, moving back to the phone. So, he, wait, where did my my home screen go? Did I not oh, hook this up? Splash. Yeah, I think you have to mark that as your home screen in Got prototype it. mode. Oh, I'll just click on there it. There you go. And then we can set this. Oh, you dear. <laughs> on the time transition. So transition, tap, time. Let's say 0.4 seconds to start. Transition, auto animate. Will it auto animate? It won't because there's nothing else. Yeah, there on the might other not screen. be anything to auto animate. Let's so a transition, transition maybe, and it could like slide over to the left. Slide left. All right, let's see how that feels. Oops, did I? Oh, there we go. Wait. I don't think it updated. Go? It. It's probably still saving to the cloud. Got it. Is there a way to update from this screen, or do no, I have I to go back here? No, I think you have to go back, back here? and then swipe down. Got it. Modify it one goes. minute ago. What did I do? I think the uh, transition was probably a little bit too quick, so maybe do like two seconds. See what happens. Do I have to tap on it? I think you might have to go back and then refresh it and go back. Got in. it. <laughs> oh no, did I click on the wrong one? <laughs> no. Cancel, cancel, go cancel. Back. Oh, cancel. It's right there. Yeah, I was thinking like micro interaction timing, so I'm like always on your right. second. I know. But I forgot this is a splash screen. Might be here all day. 22. <laughs> 23. <laughs> you should add like a dancing something here as like a loading state. Oh, we should. Make, It'll create something in auto, entertaining. with auto animate and just yeah. throw it in there. All right. Let's wait for that to load. Um, meanwhile, coming back here to look for our check mark icon. 
This one feels good. Yeah. Mojito check mark. It's not by the same guy, Michael Cena. <laughs> That'd be something. Yeah, who is this one by? It doesn't have a name. Ooh. Mysterious. Anonymous. And then, okay. So, this is like another place where I'm gonna fork. So I'll just come down here and say, once you've clicked on this, we're gonna update this to a check mark. My layers are all probably weird. Yeah, I dragged it into the bezel, not bad. Why do I keep doing that? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Often I'll just drag it like onto the, beside the artboard onto the actual canvas and then just drag uh, it on so it doesn't mask something by mistake. That would be smart. You know what I wish we had is um, a shortcut key. So when you're dragging it out, if you don't hold anything and you drag it onto a shape, it'll mask it. But mm. if you hold down, let's say command or something or command shift, then it won't mask it. It'll just plop it on top. Yeah. That'd That's actually nice... one of the things that I like about XD though, is like you can just drag a bunch of images and then it'll automatically figure itself out. Yeah. But yeah, when you are trying to drag and drop assets just to like place on the artboard, yep. it gets a little confusing. Okay, so let's make this white and then get rid of the cloud download. This Kendra's is... saying she loves the uh, sound of the Mac trackpad clicking. Oh. <laughs> I like it too. I have the older MacBook, so it's like very loud. I yeah. feel like the newer ones are super quiet. Mine doesn't really make much noise. All right, so this is saved. Um, I wonder if we need like a toast message to confirm the save or if this is enough or if we should have like an inline saved comment. Oh, maybe. And it can just like helpful. come in and then fade out. Yeah. So let's make this 18, 16. And use our one other font weight. Jan says, I bet Apple took the sound into consideration too when designing the MacBook. Make the sound more clicky yet restrained. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes I'll like obnoxiously, like if I want to appear like I'm doing a lot of work, I'll just yeah. like bang at my <laughs> keyboard or like click on my trackpad yeah. obnoxiously. Um, yeah. All right. That's saved to phone. I feel like we can play with color there, but I think this is okay for now yeah, just to totally. add some more contrast. But this, if I click on this icon, it should connect to here. Yep, and tap. All right, so as soon as I got this loaded, <laughs> I made a change. So I'm gonna go back and download it again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. There it goes. It was faster this time. <laughs> nice. Why did it do that? I thought we fixed it. I thought so too. Looks like it's updated. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, it went back to zero what? seconds. Oh. Two seconds. Can you not override it by typing it? There we go. Did it work? Yeah, yep. two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Fifth time's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like it is refreshed. Nope. Oh well, anyways, we'll figure that out later. It should work, <laughs> I promise. But here, so like, let's pretend that I'm using my phone normally and I yep. just have it on one hand. Actually with this newer phone, I'm finding it too bulky. So I do end up using both yeah. hands, but um, for the sake of this, let's just try it with one. So I can swipe through. Um, I can click on it to learn more about Raja on Pot Islands. It actually looks pretty decent. Um, I thought that this photo area on the top or here was going to be too big. Yeah, it um, looks pretty good. But I kind of like that extra visual yeah. space. So I can scroll down. Um, I can click. Oh, the body copy is a little bit small though. Like looking mm -hmm. at my phone, I might want to bump that up 
maybe four more pixels. I'm also wondering, yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I'm also wondering, should that view field guide button be above the fold? Because some people maybe won't know to scroll down. Yeah. You might be able to use some of that space in that photo at the top, like right under Indonesia, mm -hmm. and just put a button there. Mm, that's a good call. Yeah, let's do that. Because, yeah, you probably want all the CTAs to be above the fold. Right. Even though, like, there is that affordance here. And but... then the benefit of that, we were running into the problem earlier with auto animate where we scroll down and then oh, things yeah. were weird. But if it's above the fold, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good idea. Um, one thing that's a little bit weird that I should probably fix is the status bar. If you notice the time, it's not being fixed. Oh, yeah. It's scrolling off. So that's something to we need to fix as well. Um, but if I click on View Field Guide, here's my preference screen. And then I'm planning to dive in the day. And then I can see my manta rays, my whale sharks. Nice. And barracudas. Super cute barracuda. This is cute? I think so. scary? It's like scary cute. Scary cute. <laughs> it's actually really overwhelming because they they swim in like really large, is it school? Schools? I think so, yeah. So like there's just this huge cloud that's like coming in from the side oh and then with their crazy eyeballs, they just stare at you. It's really scary. Uh, cool, so that's, that's all we have so far. Let's see if we can fix some of these things really quickly. Yeah. Oh, where did my download button go? Did I hook that up? Here's my other screens. Raja on pot, if I click, oh no, it was on this guy. So if I click download, it did a weird transition where it was, like, mm -hmm. it was sliding in. We right. probably just want it to be static and yep. then change. So let's make some of those updates. Kendra agrees that's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> the barracuda? Yeah. Wait for the baby sharks. More like a barracuda. <laughs> no. I don't know. Okay, it was the first one today. <laughs> I know. I've been slacking today. All right, I'm gonna move this up here. It actually feels really good already. What is? Oh, that was my selector. Thank you, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Val, wow, Howard. All of the components that I created today don't have good layer names, but view field guide. We can actually make this smaller now that it's up in the header, right? Probably, yeah. So it doesn't have doesn't to scan have to, the full yeah. width. That feels good. And then prototype. There. So if I update this super quickly, let's see what that looks like. Field guide. Uh, that feels good. I'm liking it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like bringing the color up to the front so you know exactly what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that transition worked way better. I think so. Nice. Cool. It's awesome. exciting. Yeah. Making progress. Yeah. So what's the plan for tomorrow? So tomorrow. Last day. <laughs> the last day. It's going to be a fun day, I hope. Um, so. Baby shark. Baby I know we've shark been talking is coming about out tomorrow. Baby shark for the past two days. So we're definitely gonna do something with him. I I want to try the voice prototyping. Yeah. Um and like hide an Easter egg in this app. Ooh. So what we talked about on day one, like if you have a voice command and you summon Baby Shark, yeah. maybe he'll sing to you. Yes. No, we'll see. We'll try it That's out. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. But if there's anything you guys want to see, let us know. Yeah. I'm um, happy to go in more depth about topics that you're interested in, or if you want to see something in this app, happy to design that experience as well. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with Josh, and uh, we'll be back at 1 o'clock to yeah. wrap things up for tomorrow. Portfolio reviews are coming, so make sure to get those ready to submit tomorrow, and we will see you all bright and early tomorrow morning. See ya. Bye.